The Cellar. California's Great America is a 112-acre amusement park that is located in Santa Clara, California. Santa Clara is a city near San Jose, located in California's Silicon Valley. Santa Clara is known for being the headquarters of numerous tech companies, and it has a population of around 126,000 residents. The Great America Amusement Park originally opened in 1976. The park features over 40 rides and attractions, and if you've ever seen the film Beverly Hills Cop 3, then you will have seen an appearance from the park within that film. Over the years, the park's ownership has changed hands several times, with Prologis being the most recent owner in 2022. The park as of now is set to close by the year 2033 in accordance with the land rental agreements that have been put into place. For today's story, we will be discussing a ride that was once known as the Top Gun Roller Coaster. The ride has changed names over the years as it was known as the Top Gun from 1993 to 2006. It was then renamed the Flight Deck from 2006 until 2024, with the new name of the coaster now being Soaring Chiefs. A fun fact, the new name came from a bet that was made with Cedar Fair's sister park, Worlds of Fun. Before Super Bowl 58, California's Great America made a bet with its sister park, Worlds of Fun. Worlds of Fun is based in Kansas City, Missouri, the home of the Kansas City Chiefs. The bet entailed that one of the rides in the losing team's theme park had to be renamed in honor of the winning team. The Super Bowl was played between the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs would ultimately go on to win Super Bowl 58, and thus the flight deck was subsequently renamed the Soaring Chiefs for the park's 2024 opening weekend. With that fun fact aside, today's story takes us all the way back to 1998, when the ride was still known as Top Gun. It was September 7th, 1998, and a man named Hector Mendoza was visiting the park. Hector was a 25-year-old man from Hayward, California. Hayward is a city located in Alameda County, California, in the East Bay subregion of the San Francisco Bay Area. With a population of around 163,000, Hayward is the sixth largest city in the Bay Area and the third largest in Alameda County. To give you some more context on the roller coaster itself, when it first opened, it was only the second B&M inverted coaster model to have been built. The coaster operates with two trains. Each of the two trains can accommodate 28 passengers. The passengers are placed in seven rows with four to a single row. The coaster uses an over-the-shoulder restraint to keep the passengers in place. Unlike a lot of traditional roller coasters that have you sit down within a cart, this roller coaster had you in an upper body shoulder restraint that left your legs dangling while you were experiencing the ride. The coaster exerts a maximum of 4.5 g-forces to its riders while taking them along a track that runs a length of 2,260 feet or 690 meters. At the time of today's story, the coaster was still rocking its Top Gun movie theme with the roller coaster being made to look like the F-14 Tomcat that Tom Cruise's character in the movie piloted. The queue area of the ride had various displays of an aircraft carrier, while music played from the film's iconic soundtrack. Hector Mendoza was visiting the park at the time with his wife and his brother-in-law. It was reported that he had only just recently gotten married, and this day was meant to be a fun-filled experience for the group. The three of them arrived at the park and began walking around, selecting what rides they ultimately wanted to experience. 
at some point, the group decided to board the Top Gun coaster. While riding the coaster, Hector's wife's hat would end up blowing off of her head. The hat would eventually fall and land in the ride's operating area below. Now, at parks like this, it is not uncommon for people to lose items, especially while riding a roller coaster. In situations like this, it's common for items to be collected at the end of the day when the ride has ceased operation. I tried to find out whether or not Hector ever spoke with anyone about his wife's hat, but I ultimately could not find any information. But what we do know is that Hector got off the ride around 2.30 p.m. that afternoon. He then proceeded to scale the fence around the ride. The fence was there to keep people out of the ride's operating areas, as access was only meant for those that worked there at the park. The area itself was extremely hazardous, with signs indicating this posted along the fence. But Hector was determined to recover his wife's hat, and so he scaled the fence and jumped over to the other side. As Hector was doing this, a 28-year-old woman named Jessica Medina was boarding the Top Gun roller coaster. She too had been enjoying a fun-filled day at the park. As she boarded the coaster, she had no idea that physical and mental anguish soon awaited her. As the coaster began its trip around the 2,260-foot track, Hector Mendoza had finally located his wife's hat. But Hector had no idea that the area he was in was one of the lowest points that the track of the roller coaster ran through. The cart holding Jessica Medina was in the midst of its run along the track. Her legs were dangling, and she was having a blast. She had no idea what was about to happen. As the coaster closed in on where Hector was standing, Jessica Medina's dangling leg would make contact with Hector's skull at around 50 miles per hour, or 80.4 kilometers per hour. Jessica Medina was immediately thrust into excruciating pain as the coaster continued its course around the track. Upon ending the ride, it was clear that something horrible had just taken place. The ride would be immediately stopped and the police and emergency personnel would be called to the scene. Jessica Medina was immediately sent to the Santa Clara Valley Medical Center along with Hector Mendoza. Jessica would ultimately survive the ordeal with a badly broken leg but the emotional scar would be something that would stay with her for the rest of her life, as 25-year-old Hector Mendoza was pronounced dead around one hour after he was taken to the hospital. His wife's hat still laid in the unrestricted area, with crime scene tape and an investigation into what happened now underway. Now, for the most part in stories involving accidents at amusement parks, things like greed play a big role in what transpired. Big amusement parks have been known to sacrifice safety for profits, and they tend to get away with it. But in some instances, tragedy is all that comes from the lack of safety or training. Now I want to say that I am in no way victim blaming. What happened to Hector should not have happened. But at the end of the day, Hector made the decision to climb that fence and place himself into a highly dangerous restricted area. I found during my research that Hector primarily spoke Spanish and his lack of English speaking may be part of the reason he did not heed the signs and the warnings along the ride's fencing. At the same time, I can't imagine Hector didn't know that he was entering an area he wasn't supposed to be entering. He may not have understood how great the danger was, and sadly, this decision claimed his life and left his new wife a widow. Following the incident, the park made changes to their warning signs. They no longer just read in English but they have numerous translations into numerous other languages. The hope is that a change like this will prevent anyone else from suffering a similar, horrible fate. At the end of the day, Jessica Medina was left scarred physically and mentally. Bruises, bones, and cuts can heal, but the mental scars are something that the poor woman will have to carry with her for the rest of her life. I hope she has found some peace within with what happened, for she was not in control of Hector or the decision he made on that fateful day. As always, my deepest condolences go out to Hector Mendoza, his wife, his family, and his friends, as well as to Jessica Medina. I hope she has found peace within and has a wonderful life going forward.
Thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you enjoy the content, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps the channel continue to grow. Also, if you want to make sure you don't ever miss a new upload, you can turn on the bell notification after you subscribe. In the description box below, you will find a link to my merch store and a link to the Cellar Dwellers membership tier for the channel. If you're interested, please take a moment to go check those things out. If you'd like to submit your own scary story or a story recommendation to the channel, you can do so using the email linked in the description box below. As always, I do all the research, writing, recording, and editing for the channel myself, so anything that you do to support the channel is greatly appreciated. Until next time, I will see you all again as we head back into the cellar. <laughs>